All right, we are playing Calculus Clue today. We have been working on antiderivatives. Uh, we did one night of homework on that last night. We're gonna do some more tonight just to really nail down that idea. And so um, let's review just what we've been talking about. All right, so remember that for an antiderivative or an indefinite integral, you're going to add one to the exponent and divide by that same number. So add one, that would be five, and then divide by that same number five. Same thing here, I'm gonna add one to the three, so that would be x to the fourth, and then divide that by four. We're always gonna add this arbitrary constant, the plus c at the end when we have an indefinite integral. And then we could just simplify a little bit, the fours drop out. We do not have a product rule or a quotient rule for antiderivatives. That means that if you have a product like we do here, there has got to be a way that you could simplify that before you do the antiderivative. So for this guy, if you'll notice, we could distribute that x squared. So x squared times x would be x cubed, and x squared times 2 would be 2x squared. And now we're right back to taking the antiderivative like normal. So we would add 1 to our exponent, divide by that same value, add 1 to our exponent, divide by that same value. Don't forget about your plus c at the end. All right, look at this next one. So for this next one, I've got a quotient. There has got to be a way that I can rewrite this to get rid of that quotient. So let's get that x squared out of the denominator by using a negative exponent. So we could say 3x to the negative 2 and 8x to the negative 1. So now we're ready to um, do our antiderivative. So we're going to add 1 to this. So add 1 to negative 2, that would be negative 1, and divide by that same number. And then for this guy, if we add 1 to the negative 1, we get 0, and we can't divide by that same number. So there's got to be something else that I'm supposed to do there. Well, if you remember x to the negative 1, that's the same thing as 1 over x. What's the antiderivative of 1 over x? The antiderivative of 1 over x is ln x. So again, I would do this first piece the exact same way. I would add 1 to have negative 1 and divide by that same value. I can bring my constant straight down, and then the antiderivative of 1 over x is ln absolute value x. And then we've got our plus c. So we could just divide by this negative 1 here to clean this up a little bit. All right, look at this next one. Again, I don't have a quotient rule, so there has got to be a way that I can rewrite this to get rid of that quotient. So I'm going to break all these up over that common denominator. So I'm going to say x to the 6th over x to the 5th, negative 3x squared over x to the 5th, negative 6 over x to the 5th. And then I'm going to simplify. So when your bases are the same and you're dividing, you subtract your exponents. So that would give me x to the 1st and then negative 3x to the negative 3, and then 6x to the negative 5, because again, to get it out of the denominator up to the top, we use a negative exponent, just like we did in problem number 3 a second ago. So I have not done the antiderivative yet. All I've done is algebraic simplifications. So now we can do our antiderivative. What is the exponent on this x? Well, it's 1. So if we add 1 to that, that's going to be x to the second, divide by that same number, Add 1 to negative 3, that's negative 2, divide by that same number. Add 1 to negative 5, that's negative 4, divide by that same number. And then we've got our arbitrary constant. And then we could clean that up just a little bit, like the negative divided by a negative is a positive, and the negative divided by a negative is a positive. So you could write it um, this way, or if you wanted to move those um, negative exponents, you could move those variables back down to the denominator to get rid of your negative exponents. So it does not matter. Either one of these is exactly the same thing, so it doesn't matter which way you write it. If um, my lab math had said give answers without negative exponents, then this is the way that I want to write it. And of course, don't forget your arbitrary constant, the plus c at the end. All right, here's another one. So again, I don't have a quotient rule, so there's got to be a way that I can rewrite this. So I want to get cosecant out of the denominator. I want to move it up to the top. So I'm going to use the reciprocal of cosecant. I'm going to turn cosecant upside down. So the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So again, this was our definition for um, sine, it's 1 over cosecant, and cosecant is 1 over sine, so we're just replacing it with um, an equal value. Again, I haven't taken the antiderivative yet. All I've done is just simplify. 
So now I can do my antiderivative. So antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So I'm going to have a negative 3 times the negative cosine, so positive 3 cosine. And again, we'll have our arbitrary constant of plus c. So now that we've had just a little bit of review, here's what we're going to be doing for today. So you have a calculus clue sheet that has problems on it for you to work. You're going to answer those problems. You can use your notes, you can use a calculator, you can work with a partner, but each person must turn in their own answer sheet. So it's not one per group. Each person needs to turn in their own to receive credit. So if you look around the room at the clues that are posted, you're going to find the answer to your problem. So if you find that answer, eliminate that person, place, or thing. So for instance, if you got an answer of 5x minus 2, and on the clue on the wall with the answer of 5x minus 2, it says Ekberg, then that means it didn't happen in the Ekberg, right? You're going to eliminate that from your possible locations. So you should end up with one person, one place, and one item left at the very end and that will be your solution that's what you're going to turn in so this is your answer sheet that you're going to turn in notice that you must show all work and give answers in the boxes to receive credit if there's not work that backs up how you got your answer then you won't get credit for it so be sure that you show credit you show work to get credit